Now, from this section, we are going to start the core concept of Express. I introduce what is Express, how to use it, and we also understand how to work with Node.js without Express. And we also took a few major concepts like middlewares, routing, and views. But we just understood the basic concept. From this section, we are going to take a look at the advanced topics of Express application. So let's get started and see what we are going to learn in this advanced section. We are going to first understand what is session. Then we'll take a look at how to create a cookies in Express application. Then we just take a look at what is core middleware, core routing, build our own API using Express. Then we understand the core views. And then we're going to see how to store the data in the database and see how database integration work in Express application. So this is very important section. So we're going to dive deeper into this topic. But instead of learning syntax and examples, I'm going to explain all these topics in real world projects. But before we move to the core concept of Express application, you need to first understand how to create a form in Express application. So in this lecture, we're going to understand how to create a simple form using Express application. So let's see how to create it. So I'm going to just back my project. And here you can notice we already have this project with some dependencies. Here I have Express, Nodemon, and Puck. We already installed this module in the previous lecture. So I'm going to use this module in this tutorial. I'm going to close this package.json and open the server.js. And here I'm going to first create a simple server. So here I'm going to say constant express is equal to require and then require the express framework. Then I'm going to say constant path and require the path module. Then I'm going to create the express app using the instance of the express class. At the end, I'm going to create a constant variable port is equal to I'm going to say process dot env dot port. If the environment variable is not available, then I'm going to just specify the default value 3000. Just out of that, I'm going to create a simple route. So here I'm going to say app dot get and to the root route, I'm going to return a function with the response and request parameter and inside it, I'm going to return a simple form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back to my index.perg file, which we created in the previous lecture. And here I'm going to create a simple form. I'm going to first specify the doc type HTML. Then I'm going to create the HTML tag. Inside it, I have title. And here I'm going to say hash. And in the curly braces, I'm going to say title. So I'm going to use the variable value here when I render this file. Now just for that, I'm going to open my browser and say here getbootstrap.com and click on this get started and copy this and copy this CDN. So we can use the predefined styling for this HTML template. And I'm going to just paste this link tag here like this. You don't have to convert this link tag in Perg language. Now just for that, just sort of this title. Here I'm going to say body. Inside this body, I have a division tag with the class text center. So in Perk, you just have to specify here dot to create a class and then specify the class name text center. Now this is the bootstrap class. I'm going to specify to this division tag. I'm going to create here h1 heading tag and specify class to it h1. Then I'm going to specify padding by 4 and I'm going to simply specify a text to this h1 heading tag. So here I'm going to say simple form. Now this is a simple syntax of Perg language. So this will just create h1 heading tag with these classes and specify this text inside the h1 heading tag. Just out of that, outside of this div, I'm going to create another div. So just down here, right here, I'm going to create a division tag and specify container bootstrap class and with this container i'm going to say text center and width is going to be 25 percent so i'm going to add three bootstrap classes now just out of that down here inside this div i'm going to add a form tag so i'm going to specify here tab to insert the form inside this div keep in mind when working with perg language indention is very important so i'm going to specify here indention to create a form inside this div so here I'm going to say form and in the parentheses, I'm going to specify attribute to this form tab. So here I'm going to first specify attribute method. I'm going to specify equal to sign in the single code. I'm going to just return the post request and specify comma and I'm going to say here action. Action is equal to specify forward slash and say form submit. So I'm going to submit this form 
to this route just like that inside this form so i'm going to just press here indention like this so all the info tags will insert it inside this form tag so inside this form i'm going to create a simple div with the class form group and inside this div i'm going to create input tag and specify some attributes so here i'm going to say type is equal to text then i'm going to create a name property so here i'm going to say name is equal to username now keep in mind the name property is very important when you want to access the data of this input tag just for that i'm going to specify class here class is equal to form control this is the bootstrap class then specify value value is going to be none and i'm going to specify placeholder now this is for username so here i'm going to say username like this just out of that i'm going to copy this input tag and this division tag like this outside of this div right here i'm going to create another div with the class form group but this time i'm going to change this name to email and i'm going to change this placeholder as well to email at the end i'm going to just duplicate this line like this and inside this division tag instead of this input tag right here i'm going to say input type submit then i'm going to remove this name attribute remove this placeholder and value is going to be submit and i'm going to just change this class and here i'm going to say btn btn primary now if you want to change these classes that's upon you you can find different classes on bootstrap website save all the changes and back to my server.js file and here i'm going to render this index.perk file so as i said in the previous lecture to render this file you need to use response.render method so here i'm going to say response.render i'm going to specify the file name here index then as you know i have the title variable inside this index file this one i'm going to pass value to this title variable so in the curly braces i'm going to specify title form handling and just after that down here i'm going to start the server so i'm going to say app.listen call the port variable here and call a callback function so i can display a message when the server is started so i'm going to say here console.log and in the back tick i'm going to say listening to request on http localhost and then pass my port variable just save the changes and start the server i'm going to open my terminal and i'm going to just enter in my express app like this and say npm start i already have this command in my package.json file so i'm not going to worry about anything just click on this link and open your server now here is the problem response render is not a function oops i forgot to initialize this bug template engine so what i'm going to do is just out of this port i'm going to say app.set then specify the folder views and specify path to it so here i'm going to say path dot join and call the directory name so this will return the project directory name and then specify views folder like this then i'm going to set the view engine so i'm going to say app dot set view engine bug and reload the browser oops i'm getting the same error response dot render is not a function let me just check my code yeah right here i just misplace these parameters the first parameter is the request and second is the response and let me just clear this path right from here save the changes and reload the browser that's it now this is working fine now just for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to just submit the data using this submit button and get all the data using post request so what i'm going to do is i'm going to back to my server.js file and here i'm going to create another route down here i'm going to create a route app.post to get the posted data and then i'm going to specify the route path when i open the index.perk file you can notice here i specify here action form submit so i'm going to just submit all this data to this route so i'm going to get this data from this route using this post method so here i'm going to specify forward slash and specify form submit just after that specify comma and say request and response and inside this callback function i'm going to say constant username 
is equal to and to access the submitted data you just have to access the body property so you just need to say here request dot body and to this body you have your input data so i'm going to say here username as you know i have this username input text box so i'm going to just access the value of this username text box using this property username i'm going to duplicate this statement and instead of this username here i'm going to say email and i'm going to change this variable name to email just out of that down here i'm going to say response dot end using the backtick operator i'm going to say your username is and in the curly braces i'm going to specify username and say add email is and i'm going to just print email save the changes back to your project and reload it and now let me just specify some input inside this simple form so here i'm going to first specify username daily and then email example at the rate gmail.com when i press submit i'm going to have this submitted data on my page when i click on the submit oops the username is undefined you will get this error because you did not serialize the data you need to serialize the data when you submit the form using encoding you can serialize your data so to access this username and send this post data in serialized order we need to call here a middleware function so up here i'm going to say app.use i'm going to call express middleware and say here express dot url encoded i'm going to call this middleware and in the parenthesis i'm going to pass property extended true let me just save the changes and reload my browser now as you can notice i'm going to have my data your name is daily and your email is example at the rate gmail.com so as you can notice we successfully submitted the form data and we get all the posted data on the route form submit in the next lecture we're going to see what is session